Jack West, MD. I'm an associate clinical professor in medical oncology at City of Hope Cancer Center in the Los Angeles area, uh, and also founder and president of Grace. Uh, Isabel, can you tell us who you are and what you are? Sure. Um, my name is Isabel Preschigal. I am a thoracic oncologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering, and I am very excited to be here today speaking to all of you. And Joan. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Joan Schiller. I'm a medical oncologist um, living now in Northern Virginia. I was formerly the deputy director of the Cancer Center at UT Southwestern and also of the Shar Cancer Center in um, in Northern Virginia as part of ANOVA. Excellent. I'm glad to be with you. Let's turn to a new trial. Uh, we did get some results at the World Conference on Lung Cancer just in September uh, of what's called the Poseidon trial. And this is another chemoimmunotherapy study. Uh, and uh, it looks at chemo alone or chemo with either uh, dervalumab infinzi or a combination of, uh, of dervalumab with tremolimumab. So a, now a four drug combination. And this study showed that the progression-free survival and overall survival was better with this four drug combination. Now, the, the challenge that I see is we already have lots and lots of studies that show us other chemo immunotherapy regimens beating chemo. And we've essentially been doing this since 2018 as our standard of care. Uh, for me, the most common regimen that I pursue is chemo with Keytruda, uh, uh, pembrolizumab, which had pretty convincing data back in 2018. We now have long-term data. There are other regimens that are fine. They're not w worse, but they're not clearly better. And I find myself kind of scratching my head when I see data like this, at least released with a fanfare, because this is, hooray, we've got results just as good as what we already had for three years. Um, and, and so I would just open it up to both of you to say, uh, it, so what? Does this, does this make any difference? Uh, is there a, a, an incremental benefit for this, um, because I'm kind of uh, weary of trials that compare to old standards that are pretty much obsolete uh, in the United States, at least. So, uh, Isabel, can you comment first, and then I'll get Joan. Sure. Um, could you go back to your prior slide, if you don't mind? Yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head um, with what I was going to talk about. Um, in my commentary and and i just feel like what we need in this space is is not you know reaffirming what we know already and also making sure that our comparator arms are are appropriate and are exactly what we're using on a day-to-day -day basis to begin with um i also think i don't really know who I would use this regimen for as opposed to what's already approved. Um, it didn't really strike me as something that would be great for this niche of patients. And maybe if we do a subset analysis and we find that it's great for patients with X, Y, and Z, then we'll find a home for this. But I think right now, I'm just not sure where it really belongs. Joan, any different yeah. perspective here? I will say that this, unlike some that were trials designed well after and, and enrolled after 2018. This is one that's kind of been around and had been enrolled for a while. It just took a long time to get the results. So it's not like this trial was designed already obsolete out of the gate. It's just, you know, to me, everyone knows Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile. He's famous for that. No one knows the sixth person who did a four minute mile. Who cares? And, and that's what this is. To me, this is just like, Great, you're just as good as everything we already have. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Jack. Um, <laughs> you do have to, I, I don't know about the Roger Bannister thing, but right. uh, otherwise I couldn't agree more. You know, you do have to remember, however, that we spent a lot of the 1990s 
comparing chemotherapy regimens just like this, right? Comparing regimen chemo A plus B versus A plus C versus... Some of us have very vivid memories of that, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So it's more of the same. Um, This particular regimen, though, also has four drugs. So once again, you think about the cost. Um, Right. I'm somewhat surprised that pharmaceutical companies don't use cost as a reason for using their particular regimen. I mean, everything else does, right? A- right. I, I think that's another question that, you know, I, I think if you aren't going to be better based on efficacy or tolerability, because what we're, what we're, what we're casting here as a negative, that this is a lateral move. You could say, yeah, this is just as good and costs a third less would suddenly make it a game changer. Exactly. Right. You can always pull that lever. Yeah, exactly. But it's it's been amazing that we've had, you know, there's six, seven entrants into the same market and it's just detente about this. 